This video is about the zones in bathrooms, as updated by Amendment 2 of the Wiring Regulations. Just a few weeks ago, one of our community asked if I was going to update the bathroom guidance. All done, I replied, and then I realised that I hadn't done it at all. So, sorry guys, here it is now. This video uses the Brown Amendment 2 18th edition book and page numbers referenced in this book. There are some small changes between the amendments and we cover the relevant ones here. The wiring regs have some basic drawings on pages 245 and 246, but they can still be confusing. We will show you in a little more detail the important parts that you need to understand and hope that we make the points much more clearly. So let's look at just what the zones are in a bathroom. The zones have particular dimensions for safety of the user, so what are the significant measurements? There is a height requirement common to all zones. Horizontally along the floor we have zones 0 and zone 1 where the bathtub sits with quite strict rules. Then there is zone 2 where the rules relax slightly and finally an area called outside the zones with a further reduction in requirements. Think of the inside of the bathroom as a set of boxes. There is a box that surrounds the outside dimensions of the bath and another box that starts from the edge of the bath. The height requirement is 2.25 meters. However, if the shower head or other water outlet exceeds this height, then the height requirement increases with it. Let's take a look at zone 0 and zone 1. Zone 0 is the space inside the bathtub. All the blue area is shown on this drawing and only the blue area. Think of zone 0 as where the water goes, right to the top of the bathtub. Zone 1 is the space above and below the bathtub that is not zone 0. Remember, this includes the area under the bathtub unless something else happens. Things can change under the bathtub. In this drawing, the bathtub is against a wall on one side and a bath panel has also been installed. If the bath panel requires a tool, a screwdriver for example, or a key to remove it, then the space under the bath is classed as being outside the zones and not zone 1. We must understand the zone 1 border. It can cause confusion and often appears in exam questions as it's so easy to get wrong. Look at this drawing. Zone 0 is inside the bathtub, but zone 1 is the outside edge of the bathtub. And with most bathtubs, that can be a difference of 50 millimeters or more. Now we can look at the bathroom floor space. Please take note that there is no zone 3 in a bathroom. Another exam favourite to catch you out. There are two zones, both start from the outside edge of the bathtub. They start from the edge of zone 1, not zone 0. This box will extend along the floor to a distance of 2.5 metres from zone 1. We can begin with examining zone 2. This is the space up to 0 0.6 metres from the edge of the bath from the edge of zone 1. Notice there is no mention of zone 0. Then we have a space called outside the zones. Again, this is measured along the floor from the edge of the bathtub but only takes effect where zone 2 runs out. Let me explain. The regs tell us it is 2.5 metres from the bathtub. That's how the regs word it. But the first 0 0.6 metres is zone 2. So the outside zone's space is actually from 0 0.6 metres to 2.5 metres. This is the major change. This used to be up to 3 metres. And a great exam question to catch you out. Look at both zones together now. 0 0.6 metres for zone 2 and then up to 2.5 metres for the outside zone space. And this is all the zones together. 
if your bathroom is big enough and it exceeds the dimensions we have talked about and it extends into the green area on this drawing, then the normal rules and wiring regulations apply in the green area, as we shall see. Moving on, what electrical equipment can we install in the zones, what IP ratings, what voltages, and so on. Starting with zone 0, inside the bathtub. Only IPX7 equipment is permitted. Voltages are limited to a maximum of 12 volts AC and 30 volts DC, just a quarter of the normal extra low voltage limits. And now zone 1 equipment. Here it must be IPX4 and maximum voltages of 25 volts AC or 60 volts DC, just half the ELV limits. Some permanently connected equipment is permitted in zone 1. For instance, electric showers and shower pumps, whirlpool units, fans and ventilation equipment, towel rails, water heaters and luminaires, but they must all be correctly IP rated. Zone 2 equipment must be IPX4 rated and if a shaver unit is installed we must consider if direct jets of water are likely to fall on it from the shower. Shaver sockets must be to BSEN 61558-2-5 or equivalent. Permanently connected equipment is permitted if it is correctly IP rated. Self equipment is permitted back to the normal ELV limits now. But 230 volt switches or sockets are not permitted. Which is why the shower on off switch is often a pull cord with the switch mounted on the ceiling above the zones. We don't count string as being a conductive part. Moving to the space that is called outside the zones, this used to be known as zone 3 many years ago, but not anymore. Another exam catch you out. Lots of people still think of it as zone 3 when, according to the regs, it isn't. In this outside zones space, most of the general requirements of the regulations apply. Accessories such as fused spurs, switched FCUs, etc. are permitted, but not 230 volt sockets. Beyond 2.5 metres from the edge of the bathtub, or more than 2.25 metres in height, we are into the green zone on this drawing. Many bathrooms will just exceed 2.25 metres in height, great for mounting ceiling pull switches. But most bathrooms will not have floor spaces greater than 2.5 metres from the bath. Occasionally you will come across them, but most times the bathroom is one of the smaller rooms in a house. And now the general requirements apply to any equipment or wiring in the green space. Accessories are allowed, fused spurs, etc. and 230 volt sockets are permitted but they must have 30 milliamp RCD protection. And a couple of points to be aware of. Underfloor heating and wall heating installations, except self installations, must be covered by an earthed metallic grid. And the actual heating cables themselves must be in an earthed metallic sheath. This is the bathroom where people take their clothes off and stand on a wet floor. The regulations are there to make them safe. All circuits in a bathroom location must have 30 milliamp RCD protection, except self circuits. Any circuit passing through zone 1 or zone 2 must have 30 milliamp RCD protection, except self circuits, even if those cables and circuits are not supplying equipment in the zones. If it passes through the zone, then RCDs are needed. And a last point on self equipment. Most self equipment will be supplied by a 230 volt transformer, what we call the source. That source, the 230 volt transformer and the 230 volt cables must be physically situated outside the zones. They can be in the loft, behind a wall, but they must be outside the zones. Again, we are protecting the users from electric shock. Depending on which books you may have to hand, 
Here is where to find relevant information and more in each of these books. I always have all three books with me as they each contain extra little bits of information that don't appear in the others. We are working to Amendment 2, the brown book. If you are still using the blue book or Amendment 1, then the page numbers and some of the information will not match. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. And we hope that you found this video useful and that you've added a little more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, that you can also type in Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.